Hello, instructor. Thank you for accessing the pre recorded video for the September 2013 session of the Division 5 WebEx series. This month's focus is web based resources. And being that Red Cross is moving more and more towards remote technology, this presentation will hopefully make you more comfortable with the internet tools that are at your disposal. Keep in mind that this presentation will be sent to you by your training specialist at the end of the month and all the links and websites I will be discussing will be available below this video in the description section so you can copy and visit the sites um, whenever you like. My name is George Medina. I'm the training specialist for the South Florida Territory and I will be presenting um, this pre-recorded session. To receive credit in your record for participating in the pre-recorded session, please email the answers to the knowledge check questions that you'll find in this presentation to your training specialist buyer before the end of the month, which would be, in this case, September 30th, 2013. The agenda for this session includes a Division 5 resource site review. Um, we're also going to talk about each of the website purposes. We're going to go over the Learning Center, which is also known as Saba the Instructor Corner Tools and Resources. I'm going to talk about how to post your availability and when to work and the benefits of the Red Cross Refresher site. I'm going to go over the Exchange intro website and the um, two subcategories of the Exchange, which are Concur for Travel and eTime to post your time card. I'm going to talk about the um, ARC mail or your Red Cross email address, as well as um, the PTOC folder or SharePoint folder. Technology is a critical component of maintaining our remote relationship with you, so the implementation of advanced technology falls in line with the natural trends that we're seeing in academics and leading businesses, and also the evolution of mobile devices. So ultimately, if you position yourself to practice and learn how to use technology to your benefit, you will be ahead of the game as a Red Cross instructor. So the first site that I'm going to review with you is the Division 5 resource site. Um, it is a category of SharePoint sites that we have. And the website address for that is https colon slash slash neighborhoods dot redcross dot org slash hss2 slash div5 slash instructors. Again, as a reminder, the links for this presentation are in the description section below this video. And you'll also be able to see it here in the browser address bar as I'm doing this demo. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to show you here on the left hand side of the screen. Um, these links are all of the important links that you're going to be um, accessing um, during your experience as a Red Cross instructor. Um, some of these are going to be more um, handy if you are a PTOC or paid um, employee of the Red Cross and some of these will only be um, used if you're a volunteer. So we have the exchange which you'll likely be using um, as a PTOC to get access to your Concur as well as eTime. Um, we have the Red Cross email address which volunteers and paid instructors both have um, access to. We have the PTOC folder which um, if you have a LAN account with us or an exchange account you can have access to that folder as well. Um, the when to work um, site um, which is our scheduling system. Red Cross Learning Center aka Saba. Instructors Corner. Um, the pre-recorded WebEx presentations. Red Cross Refresher Center and the main website redcross.org as well as Volunteer Connection. Um, I'm going to click here real quick on Volunteer Connection so you could see what the Volunteer Connection site looks like. I'm not going to talk a lot about the Volunteer Connection site um, because if you are a volunteer, um, please connect with your Volunteer Services Department so that they can teach you how to use this site properly. So going back to um, the Division 5 resource site, over on the right-hand side, I'll be able to see announcements. For example, um, we had a job aid released um, concerning how to properly teach a blended learning class as a visual outline. Uh, so you'll be able to find these important um, links and documents that, as they are released if you look at the announcements section. Um, additionally, we have a calendar section here. 
Um, and if I click on the um, link to calendar, I'll be able to see it in larger view. I'll have deadlines for e-time on there, um, depending on your territory, as well as the schedule for upcoming WebExes. For example, the live WebEx section for uh, September is here. If you click on it, you'll be able to see all of the um, login information for it, um, the time, and the topic. So this is a great opportunity um, for you to stay in touch with whatever's going on. If you want to save um, these reminders to your computer, you're more than welcome to do so. And I'm going to go back because I want to show you one more thing on the Division 5 um, website. So if you are on here, you'll be able to see the latest version of um, the WebEx um, pre-recorded session. So here you'll see July because right now I'm in the process of recording the September one. Um, but this again is a great way to just visit one place and see everything, the calendar, the latest um, WebEx presentation, as well as the links and announcements. So please take advantage of the Division 5 resource site. And before I move forward in talking about the rest of the sites, I want to um, delve into the different links that you can find on the Division 5 um, site. I created a table here for you guys to review. Starting with the Division 5 resource site, there's the address there. Um, and again, all of these links are available in the description section below this video. We have the Red Cross Interweb. Um, access which the site is called the exchange that's https colon slash slash internet dot red cross dot org um, and through the exchange you'll be able to access HR direct and for travel expenses you'll be able to um, access concur by clicking the tools um, bar um, at the top of the exchange to send and read emails arcmail that's red cross dot org slash arcmail um, to access um, the shared documents that we put in the SharePoint, you want to go to the PTOC folder. Um, so that's the um, HTTPS colon slash slash neighborhoods.redcross.org slash HSS2 DIV5 slash PTOC percentage sign 20 folder. Um, if you want to look at your schedule and change your availability, that's through when to work, when to work.com. Certifications and records. Um, if you are looking to uh, look at your certifications and download um, your rosters, for example, you can go to the Learning Center, https colon slash slash classes.redcross.org. If you need um, copies of your instructor manual, participant materials, bridging, um, recertification instructor instructions, that is an instructor's corner, www.instructorscorner.com. If you want to manage your volunteer hours, go into the volunteer connection. That's https colon slash slash volunteerconnection.redcross.org. If you want to see the pre-recorded meetings, that's through YouTube, www.youtube.com slash PHSS Division 5. You'll also see the latest YouTube video on the Division 5 resource site. Student resources, post-course. If a student says, hey, I want to watch this video um, online, um, you know, the ones that you were showing in the class, tell them, hey, go to redcrossrefresher.com. Hey, I want more information about child CPR and infant CPR. Um, that's fine. You can go to the Red Cross Refresher site. They'll give you more information about that. I want to download the Ready Reference cards, redcrossrefresher.com. And if somebody has questions about registration into a class, jobs, and volunteer information, please direct them to www.redcross.org. You see that this table is color-coded. That's because things that are in blue require your exchange slash LAN account, which is your na first name dot last name at redcross.org. Um, the stuff that's in green doesn't require any passwords or usernames to enter. And the stuff that is in red means that you'll have selected the username and password for that yourself. So it could be something completely different than your LAN account. Um, so I wanted to make sure to color code that so that it'll help you dist distinguish um, how to log in to each of these sites. So the next site that we're going to visit is Saba. Um, some of you are familiar with this, https colon slash slash classes.redcross.org. Um, if you're having trouble logging into Saba, 
forgot your password link is here and also forgot your username, you can also call 1-800-RED-CROSS um, during the day. I'm going to log into um, Saba using my credentials. And the preference is for it to be your email address, um, your Red Cross email address if you have one. And um, that way it's easier for you to remember. But the password will be different than your um, LAN account password un unless you um, change it to match it um, each time that you change your LAN account password. I'm going to log in. And the first thing that I want to show you is the Home tab. Under the Home tab, you'll be able to see the catalog search if you want to search for classes to take. And also, you'll see a list of your current enrollments. Next to that, you'll find the My Learning tab. And under My Learning, you'll see um, different subcategories on the left-hand margin. My enrollments, my curricula, my certifications, my and my transcripts. So um, we'll start off with the first one, my enrollments. Um, and these are things that I'm currently enrolled in. Um, for example, if I enrolled into a recertification class or a bridge course or an update, then I'll be able to find it under my enrollments. And now I want to jump to my certifications. And this is important that you guys are monitoring this um, carefully and regularly because um, if your instructor certification is expired, then any records that um, you submit um, will be bounced back. So um, this is how you get into um, looking at your certifications under My Learning. You can see, for example, my certification um, expires February 7, 2014. I did my recertification February 8, 2012. So keep that in mind that you need to keep your um, certifications um, up to date. If your certification is within 90 days of expiring, you can go here to sign up for a recertification test. Generally, you'll be able to go under Actions um, to do the recertifications, or you'll see um, under Status, you'll see the recertification link there as well. Recertification tests um, are between 30 and 40 questions and are to be completed every two years. Um, so again, you have to at least have taught once within those two years and finish that um, 30 to 40 question um, test through the Learning Center. If you're having trouble registering online, um, make sure that you call the Training Support Center at 1-800-RED-CROSS and they'll help you enroll into the recertification. I'm going to jump next to my transcript. You'll be able to see all the classes that you've taken with the Red Cross if you give it a date range here. So let's say I want to see all the classes that I've um, taken with Red Cross since 2010. So I'll do a search here. And I'll be able to see that I took a recertification test for babysitters training um, so that I could recertify myself as a babysitter's instructor. So I did that online. Um, you'll see the online classes you've taken, the in-person classes you've taken, and in many cases you'll be able to um, pull up the certification, um, the 8.5 by 11 version of your certification. So I'll close this out because I also want to show you my profile. Under my profile, you'll be able to um, look at your um, personal information to make sure that it's all um, correct. So um, you'll be able to hit Edit Profile Snapshot. And you'll be able to see all of your information and edit it as needed. Um, if you move, um, if you um, have a, a different address, just make sure to go in there and update it. Moving forward to the Reports tab. Um, there are two important reports that I want to show you how to pull. Um, and I want to go um, not to the first sec or second one, but to the third one here under Resources. I can expand that by clicking the plus sign. And I'll be able to see that um, it says the Learner's Instructor Profile and the ARC Instructor's Assignment. The Learner's Instructor's Profile is going to be your instructor proof of your certifications with the Red Cross. So if somebody's asking you, oh, I need proof that you're an instructor, show me your certifications, um, you actually will be showing them your transcript. Um, and, and here for ARC Instructor Assignments, you'll be able to um, show them your um, classes that you've taught. Um, with the Red Cross. So I'm going to pull up here 
um, what it looks like. Um, here is the instructor transcript. You can see that I am um, I have several certifications and um, they are up to date. So they say the expiration is 2015, 2014, etc. So that looks good. So this is something that I'd be able to share with somebody if they need to verify my instructor certifications. Um, you can print them if you want to do that. When, I, when you pull any report with Red Cross um, Saba system, you will notice that they are a crystal report. So you can see that here, crystal report viewer. You want to convert it into a PDF before you can print it, which is easy. Just make sure that you see this top bar over here. Um, you have to scroll up to be able to do that. So I'm scrolling here and I'm clicking print this report. And I'll see a pop-up that comes up that says print report. So I can click OK. And I'll see another pop-up that says, um, do you want to open or save this file? So normally I click open because I don't generally need to save these files. And then I'll be able to see um, my transcript as a PDF. And then I can click print and print it on either my office printer or I can print it on my home printer. So again, it's very um, simple um, to convert a crystal report into a, um, a physical document if need be. So I'm going to close this out so I can show you the other report um, that's available to us as instructors. And that is the ARC instructor assignments. So say if I want to see the classes that I've taught since 2010, so I can go ahead and put that in the um, calendar field. I can submit it and I'll be able to see all the classes that I've taught. If I want to convert this into a PDF, again, I'd print the crystal report through here in the same way. Great, so moving forward, I'm going to now um, talk a little bit about Instructor's Desk. So again, when you log into Saba, different um, people have different privileges depending on the kind of training and permissions that have been granted um, to you as an instructor or as an admin um, staff person. So in my case, um, and in the case of many um, instructors um, in our division, you might have access to instructor's desk. This is different than CR admin. Um, CR admin is course record administration. What um, you need to um, have access to for the rest of this tutorial um, segment is instructor's desk. So again, I'm going to um, show you this tutorial, but um, you may or may not have access to an instructor's desk. You're going to have to consult with your training specialist um, if you um, need access um, to instructor's desk. So essentially, the two practical things that you'll be able to do with instructor's desk is look up general information about um, upcoming offerings and pull your class roster so that you can print the class roster for your course and also print your certifications. If you're looking for general class information, do not cl um, click on my offerings because we do not assign the class in Saba um, to you um, prior um, to the course. We assign you to the course through when to work. So you will not find general information about your classes under my offerings. But if you click the offerings tab, the second tab or the middle tab for instructor's desk, you'll be able to do a date search. Um, say, for example, I know that I'm teaching classes um, on the 7th um, of September. So I can pick the 7th of September for start and an end date. And then I want to look for the location. So I can do FL for Florida. And um, I can hit the magnifying glass over here. And the magnifying glass will bring up every territory that's in um, Florida, or rather every region that's in Florida. So for me, I'm in South Florida. So I'm going to pick South Florida here. And now I see FL South Florida. I have my date, my um, region. So I'm going to um, click search. And in my search, I'll be able to see, okay, well, there's some disaster courses going on, shelter, fundamentals. But what I wanted to know was the class that I'm teaching, and I am teaching um, the adult CPR AED class. So I want to take um, note of the offering ID. I could write it down, um, but I can also click it so I can get general information. And the general information that I'll be able to see when I click on the um, offering name is the offering ID, of course. 
Um, I'll be able to see the location, the facility. It's being taught at the Broward County Headquarters Office. The time, 9 a.m. to 12, start date, and um, the status of the class, which is um, open, and it's, it's open normal. Um, so generally, that's what I can um, see in this section. If I want to look at just the student names, I can click Roster. This isn't the official class roster. It's just a listing of the names of the people in the class. One more thing that I can see in the offering details is the description of the class. So maybe you weren't sure what the description was, especially some of our newer instructors, so you'll be able to see that um, as well. So with this general information, there's not much that I can do except for maybe copying the offering ID of the class. Offering IDs can be found this way, or you can go ahead and ask your training scheduler or look and when to work for offering IDs. Uh, because I want to move to the practical part of this, which is actually pulling the class roster. I have to look um, under the reports tab, make sure that I'm still under instructor's desk here, and I'm going to expand the offering section of the reports tab. Um, I'm going to search for American Red Cross um, class roster. And I'll be able to put in the offering ID here. Um, make sure that there are no spaces after the number. I'm going to click back. And I'm going to hit the magnifying glass and see that, very good, the uh, adult CPR AED class comes up. And I hit submit. And I'm going to see a crystal report for my um, class roster right here and I can print that um, so that I could have it for the day of my class. Um, one more thing that I want to talk about when it comes to the report section, whenever you're in any report section of Saba, you'll be able to click the email um, option. If say you want to email the class roster to your co-instructor, um, you'll be able to put the co-instructor's email address here, um, you know, give it some um, a body saying, hey, dear co-instructor, I'm, I'm emailing you a copy of the um, class roster so that we both have a copy. Same thing with your tra transcript. You can click email to email your instructor transcript to anybody you like. It'll appear as a system um, generated um, email so that it looks official from the Red Cross. Now for our first knowledge check. Um, which site will allow me to download a copy of my instructor transcript? A, the Learning Center, B, CrossNet, C, Instructor's Corner. If you answered A, the Learning Center, you are correct. Um, remember that instructor transcript is um, a report under the Reports tab um, in the Resources section. The next website is Instructor's Corner. Um, that's www.instructorscorner.com. If you forget the password, we have the Forgot Password link here. And um, if you're a new user, they also have the new user registration um, link here. You can also click Contact Us, and you can get in touch with Crame Staywell, the company that manages um, Instructor's Corner right here. They have an email address and a phone number. 1-800-667-2968. They can also help you with your password issues over the phone. So I'm going to go back to the home um, section and um, I'm going to make sure to um, show you the different areas of the site. Normally, Instructor's Corner is um, set up so that it's a list of programs and courses. For example, we have the first aid and CPR AED program here. And um, it's, it's generally the courses that you teach, like the Lay and Pro, um, EMR, Bloodborne Pathogens, um, Emergency Oxygen, Wilderness, the First Aid for Youth, and Pet First Aid, Hands Only CPR. Um, the babysitting part is under caregiving. But I want to explore the First Aid and CPR AED tab first because I want to give you a little bit of compare and contrast between the Pro um, the Lay and Pro programs, and as well as the differences between the classroom and blended learning. Um, if I go to the Lay program, I'll be able to see um, under classroom, it's the, the first thing that pops up. So I can um, see, for example, um, if I go under Instructor and Access Digital Materials, I'll be able to see the Instructor Manual, the course presentation, and also all the optional modules that um, we have available. Um, if I need to uh, 
purchase the materials, I can do that as well. Um, if I just want to show video segments to stream, that's also there as well. Um, and it's also divided by the different lessons that we have um, in the program. I'm hoping that all of you are using the course presentation. It's a great tool um, because everything um, is available in kind of a PowerPoint style um, presentation. And um, you can either download it to your desktop or you can stream it if you have internet access where you're teaching. And it'll have the um, course um, lecture, it'll have the videos, and it'll have all of the activities all in one place. Um, so before giving care, what would you do video, um, you know, the introduction video um, that you've all seen on the DVD, the at-the-scene activity cards. So all of it is in one place. So I really encourage you to um, use this and get comfortable with the course presentation. It really takes the um, science out of um, figuring out um, how to present the course. It's very straightforward. Now, uh, moving on to the resources that we have here in the center, um, they have the recertification assessment information. So in case you are about to expire in your certification, you can access that. The instructor bulletin has great information about the program and also information about how to bridge into the program if need be. Um, you also have the information about the instructor updates as well. If I look at the CPR um, AD per the professional rescue program, you'll notice that um, it's set up almost identically. You have access to the digital materials, the instructor manual, the course presentation, and um, you'll also be able to stream the videos um, right off of the site. Um, so let's say if I want to stream two-person rescuer, I can go ahead and do that. And I don't even need the DVD to be able to um, stream the presentation. So that's just a quick demo there for you guys. And um, you'll be able to find the recertification information, the instructor bulletin, which shows you how to bridge into Pro. I know some of you may want to do that. Um, and how to do the update, which is part of um, the bridging process. And, um, and all of them show you forms and fact sheets. Now I want to switch um, gears back to um, the LAY program because the LAY program also has everything available in Spanish. Um, that's the difference between the LAY and the PRO. The LAY has a Spanish translation. The PRO does not have a Spanish translation. Um, LAY and PRO both have a blended learning section. And keep in mind that the blended learning information is different. Um, the supplement is shorter um, because it doesn't have any of the lectures. Um, so make sure that you have the supplement for blended learning if you're teaching a blended learning class um, because it is specifically designed um, not to have um, the lecture points in it. So you, as you can see, um, there's the skill chart. I'm looking at breathing emergencies. It just says video and skills. And then it shows me the skill chart. There's no um, lectures about why people choke, etc. So it's all in one um, place. Just go ahead and print that out. And then the skills um, presentation um, is the same thing as the um, um, course presentation that I showed you earlier for lay, except they've taken out all the lecture slides and activity slides uh, because they're only going to be doing the skills um, during the blended learning um, program. Same thing goes for the pro program that does have a blended learning um, component, um, so subcategory, so you can click blended learning and you'll be able to find um, all of that. And also in the lay and the pro, if you look under instructor information, you'll be able to see how to teach a blended learning class. Um, you can sign up um, either lay or pro, it doesn't matter, um, for the demo of the class. It has a link here so you can look at what the students see when they're at home doing the online part um, of the demo. So again, to access um, the online um, part um, in demo format so that you can see what the students see at home, click the How to Teach Blended Learning, either in the Lay section or the Pro section for blended learning. For those of you wondering um, if there are any bridgings that you can do at home, um, just completely at home, web-based, um, the Bloodborne Pathogens is set up so that you can do your bridging at home, online, at your leisure.
Um, so the steps for bridging are there. Once you click Bloodborne Pathogens, you'll see it here. Same thing goes with the Wilderness First Aid. Um, all you need to make sure to have is at least a first aid, a current first aid certification um, to be able to do the online bridging for um, Wilderness. You have to be at least a lay responder instructor to be able to bridge into Wilderness or Bloodborne Pathogens. Now, if, say, you're coming into the organization as a professional rescuer responder and want to bridge into the lay responder program, um, you want to make sure that you do the, excuse me, make sure that the professional rescuer instructor has a first aid or a standard first aid certification um, in order to um, properly bridge into the um, first aid CPR AED program. You'll find the steps for bridging um, in the instructor bulletin. So um, typically, um, if you open up the instructor bulletin, you'll be able to go to the bridge section. So I'll just go ahead and search for bridge um, here and find the section that says bridge there we go so right here where it says CPR AED for professional rescuers bridging um, so like I said before you have to possess a current standard first aid certificate or equivalent obtain and retain a first aid and CPR AED um, participants and instructor materials and you complete the online instructor update so um, those are the only three steps that you have to take um, make sure that um, you um, follow the guidance um, that is set by your training specialist to be able to complete um, all of these steps so that's from going from pro to lay um, if you are going from lay to pro then it's the same idea. So I would go into the pro section. I would look for the instructor bulletin. I would open it up. And I can search for bridging here. Bridging. And um, Again, it says here from first day CPR AD instructors, bridging must be at least 17 years of age, possess a professional rescuer um, and healthcare provider certificate or equivalent. So you have to have the knowledge of how to use a BVM, a to do two person rescuer. So you have to be CPR certified in pro at the professional rescuer level, obtain the uh, materials, complete the online instructor update and successfully complete the CPR AED Professional Rescue Healthcare Providers Instructor Course Final Exam. So um, if you're doing lay to pro, you have to actually do that final exam here um, to, to complete the bridging process. So again, the updates are available here. So you can look for the instructor update and do the um, update this way. The, it's, the updates are available there for pro and also available here for lay as well. So once you enroll into that, you'll be able to complete that through the um, learning management system or the learning center, also known as Saba. Um, one more bridge that you'll be able to do um, with the Red Cross, um, which requires an in-person component, is the babysitter's one. Um, in order to do a bridge for babysitting, just make sure that you look at all the um, online uh, materials, the participant materials, and as well as um, um, be able to um, get access to the videos. So they're all here, um, the video segments. And then um, you're going to have to do a pre-course test, which can be provided by your training specialist. And then you have to take a 4.5 hour um, crossover section um, now modifications can be made by your training specialist, so you'll have to um, discuss that with them. Um, but that 4.5 hour um, crossover section ends with the instructor exam. Now there are some programs that you can go ahead and do a self-study orientation without taking any tests at the end. And that includes the self-study to the PET First Aid program. Just look at the materials for that under the instructor and participant sections. Um, and then you can also um, look at the 
Oh, well, for the participant materials for the dog and cat, you'll have to pick that up um, from your training specialist. So make sure to arrange that if you are doing a bridge into pet first aid. Um, so again, there's no test for that. All you have to do is read the material because it's a leader-led um, course. Another um, leader-led um, course would be any of the um, first aid for youth programs. So just make sure to get the materials from your training specialist for that. And um, administering oxygen is an instructor level um, certification, but you still only have to look at the uh, material. You don't have to take a test to be able to teach this. You're automatically authorized to teach emergency oxygen so long as you're a lay, pro, um, lifeguarding, or EMR instructor. Hands-only CPR is another leader-led um, program. So you can go ahead and look at the materials here. Um, the participant materials, self-orient yourself to it, and um, just let your training specialist know when you've done a self-orientation to um, any of the leader programs. That way they can add the leader certification to your um, profile. And the next site that I'm going to discuss is When to Work. Um, when to Work is our scheduling um, program. And really what I want to hone in on is how to um, properly log in your availability. So um, again, just like all the other sites, they have a password help link. But you can also um, ask your training scheduler if you're having trouble with signing in to um, When to Work. So I'm going to go ahead and log in as me. Okay, I got an error message, so I'll just refresh that. And typically, if you try again or refresh when you're logging in, um, you'll be able to um, get what you need to um, get. So whenever you get an error message, always try again. Notice that it happens to me too. I might get an error message. Um, so just try again. So here I'm going to go into choose times I prefer to work. Um, and I want to be able to set specific date preferences. Um, so I'm going to look at um, that. Generally, my availability is going to be either green or it's going to be red. Green meaning that I can teach during that time, red meaning that I cannot. Um, now, you want to discuss this with your training specialist um, because I know that different territories have different requirements and deadlines for putting in your availability. Um, so again, make sure that you get specific guidance from your training specialist. Um, but I'm going to show you how to um, set your weekly availability and as well as your monthly availability. So here, once you click set specific date preferences, you'll be able to specifically um, set it for the whole month that's coming up. So let's say I'm setting up my availability for, um, say, October. So I go ahead and move to October. It says October 2013. And then let's say that um, I'm available only during the, um, uh, during the weekdays not during the weekends in October. So I'm going to go ahead and paint my availability green, and then I'm going to click here for red to paint my weekends red. Okay. And I'll save the changes. So um, that's one way that I can do that. If I have a weekly schedule that repeats that's very specific, then I can go ahead and do that as well. Um, let's say I'm not available all day Monday, so I can paint all day Monday and say all day Tuesday, I'm not available either, um, cause say I have school for a whole semester. So I can go ahead and paint, um, Mondays and Tuesdays, um, red so that I'm not scheduled for Mondays and Tuesdays. You could do it with the paintbrush or you could just pick, you know, Monday, um, or Tuesday or let's say I'm not available Sunday, I can go ahead and click the time. So from, um, for example, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m., I'm not available. So I will add that. 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. Sorry, I needed to change this to cannot work instead of prefer to work. So make sure that you click that um, radio dial here so I can add it. 
there we go it changes if I want to make it back to green then I just hit prefer here in green and add that and that's how I set those on um, preferences if I am able to start working on Mondays again then I just click on Monday I make sure that that's green here and then I add that and then the final thing that I can also set preferences for is the positions that I prefer to teach or not teach. Um, say, for example, I do not want to be um, scheduled for um, pet first day classes, so I can always click that until it shows up as red. The next site is Red Cross Refresher, which is a great site to refer our students to. Um, it allows them to do quarterly refreshers um, that are free. Anybody can access it as long as they go to redcrossrefresher.com. Um, Red Cross Refresher also allows students to download um, the app, so they have information about the apps and also purchase um, material. So I'm going to click the Lay Responder program here and um, move forward. So if, say, for example, somebody wanted to do the infant refresher, they can do that. Um, and anybody can do it. And here they'll be able to watch the videos. So I can click here and watch the video for um, how to do infant CPR. So it's available to anybody um, who has access to the internet. Um, they don't have to um, pay for accessing refresher. And one more thing that they can do here on Red Cross Refresher is download the ready reference cards. So I know that some people want to be able to access that from home and they have that ability to access that from here. So um, one important point about the refresher site, um, if somebody is expiring in their certification, the Red Cross Refresher site does not recertify them. Um, it just basically refreshes their knowledge um, at a quarterly level is the expectation. The best practice is that if, say, somebody asks you, oh, can I get more information about infant CPR and you're teaching an adult class, you can always refer them to Red Cross Refresher if, say, they don't want to take um, a, an infant and child CPR course. So up next is the exchange. So just like all other sites that require a password, um, they have a forgot password link here, or you can call the 888-778-7762. That's the IT service desk, and they're open 24-7. So if you need to call them at 2 in the morning, you can call them at 2 in the morning. You're going to use your LAN account to um, access the exchange. So I'm logging in right now. And um, two of the things that you'll have access to, um, if you click the tool section, is the HR Direct and Concur. Um, you'll also be able to access benefits if you're an employee, um, Performance Plus, the IT Service Desk, Brand Central, as well as Request if you're an administrator that um, orders materials for um, the office. Um, the, the format of the exchange ha makes a great intro web because they now have search functions that are very user friendly. Um, they have stories with um, videos and pictures. They have a message from the president of the Red Cross. So really, um, it's a great site to explore and find resources and learn a lot about the organization. So let's start off with Concur. Concur is our travel um, application that we use um, in case we are setting up travel. Like if, say, we have air travel coming up and we need to go to another state, um, or if we're setting up hotel um, reservations or even car rental reservations, we can do that through Concur. Um, but one thing that um, I want to make sure that you guys know how to do is how to properly um, make up your expense reports. So that's done through the um, Concur website. Once the um, site comes up, you can click on the Expense tab and click New Expense Reports. And you'll be able to see what is called a report header. For each report that you write, you can add several expenses to it. So let's say it's a 15-day period, about two weeks, and you taught 10 classes. You're going to be putting all of those 10 classes in the same report. So 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and say that I did a class between August for travel, August 26 to September 9th. Um, and the business purpose was um, full service and community courses in South Florida. The um, f fund codes will already be on there, so you don't have to worry about the account codes. And then I'll click Next. You'll want to click New Expense. And you want to search. In most cases, you're going to be searching for um, personal vehicle mileage. And you can find it here as you're searching. And you want to be able to um, put in the date that it happened. So let's say I was traveling on um, August 31st. And that was when I used the uh, my personal vehicle to travel. Um, so I want to put the purpose of the trip. I want to put whether or not it was a full service. So I could put full service or I could put community class. And I want to make sure what the um, training site was. So if it was full service, train um, the training site was ABC Company. And I want to put it from my home, 555 Elm Street, Miami, Florida, 33111. That's a fictional address, by the way. And then... ABC Company, 222 um, Southwest 9th Avenue, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 35111. So then I want to put a distance in. I'm going to use my favorite mapping service to do that, um, to calculate um, the distance. So let's say it was um, 57 miles and I can put here that it was round trip under comments. And then I'll save that. And then I can continue adding more and more expenses um, as long as it's within that 15-day um, window. Um, if it's a class that's more than 15 days old, that means that it's late. But um, depending on the policies um, of your training specialist, and of the Red Cross, we may be able to um, um, reimburse you for um, items that are older than 15 days. Once you um, go ahead and fill out all of these expenses, then you just hit Submit Report. Other things that you might be able to um, expense is um, food if you're staying overnight at um, due to work at a location. Um, if you're putting gas into a chapter vehicle. And also, if, say, you have to pay for parking um, somewhere, you'll be able to also put it in here. Um, if it's anything that's um, more than $35, you will have to show a receipt. If it's parking or if it's um, gasoline for a chapter vehicle. I want to let you all know that Concur also has a mobile app for Android, BlackBerry, and iPhones. So you can do all of this that I showed you on your uh, mobile device if you have a smartphone. Um, and it's and it's very user friendly. It's very intuitive. It's similar to what I showed you on the full site, only much much easier. So going back to the Exchange main page, I'll be able to um, expand the tool section and go to um, HR Direct. In HR Direct, I'll be able to um, go under Time and Attendance and Welcome. And I'll be able to click either one of these. If um, you have Java on your computer, you click the first eTime link. If you don't have Java on your computer or if it's not working, um, you can click the second eTime link. So I'm going to use the second one for this demonstration. Um, so that way um, you're able to um, see what it looks like, the um, alternate version. And this is the alternate version. You have um, the My Information box down here where you can click My Time Card. Um, once I click on my time card, I'll be able to see um, my time card here. 
uh, make sure that you are either on the current pay period or if you're going to do your time card in advance, you can also even click next pay period and do your time card for the next pay period. Um, if you're teaching a class, make sure that um, if it's a four-hour class, um, that you add two hours to that under hours worked. If you're going to add another column for um, if you're going to add another column for travel, you can do that as well. So you have um, CE1 travel EL. So you can um, use that to um, put travel. You're only allowed to report travel as a PTOC if it's outside of your region. So um, please make sure that you um, only report travel if it's outside of your region and use the CE1EL travel code. Keep in mind that your time card needs to be approved whether or not you have hours worked um, for that um, pay period. Up, up next is ArcMail. Um, that's your Red Cross email address and both um, paid and volunteer employees of the Red Cross or paid and volunteer staff members of the Red Cross can um, have access to a Red Cross email. Um, so I'll log into mine. You use your LAN account um, password, username and password to get in. So um, once you get in, you're going to be able to notice um, different things. Uh, but mainly what I want you guys to notice is that you can go into the options section and see all options. And um, so notice that you will have access to um, your forwarded emails. So if you click forwarded emails, you can forward your Red Cross email um, over to your personal email account. Just make sure you hit new and you'll be able to do that forwarding option. There's also a tutorial on this that you can find in the SharePoint. Um, it's a job aid that walks you step by step through um, how to forward your work email to your personal email. And the final site that I'm going to discuss is the PTOC folder, which is also the instructor resource folder in the SharePoint. Um, that's under the neighborhoods.redcross.org slash HSS2 slash DIV5 PTOC percentage sign 20 folder. And you'll be able to find um, several different um, resources. For example, I have blended learning resources here. Um, the latest CAP surveys are here, which is the student evaluations that you hand out and um, send in class forms like the after action report, um, the in-service meeting schedules that are in Division 5, and also you'll be able to find IT resources as well as local resources that have been created that are territory specific. So each territory has its own logistical methods um, and different facilities um, that um, you'll be able to find resources here. Um, that are specific to your um, area. The how-to job aids is really important because, like I mentioned before, there's a how-to for almost everything. How-to for using eTime, how to assemble mannequins, how to access your digital materials online, um, how to access your Red Cross email, um, and also there's a tutorial on how to use Concur, um, and um, there's several different tutorials that um, I want you to go ahead and review here. How to set up email forwarding. Like I told you before, you can use this tutorial to um, send your Red Cross emails to your personal email. Quality assurance forms are here. Um, payroll forms are also here. Travel policy, WebEx meeting PowerPoints. Um, so, for example, whenever we do a WebEx, we make sure to put the um, PDF version of the WebEx here so you guys can look at it um, for future reference. So the um, final knowledge check is where can I refer my students to download the first aid app, ready reference cards, and watch the course videos at home? A, the Learning Center, B, Instructor's Corner, C, Red Cross Refresher. 
So if you said Red Cross Refresher, that is correct. Um, they can um, download a lot of things on there, watch the video, get information about the First Aid CPR AED app. So thank you for participating in the pre-recorded session of the um, September Division 5 WebEx, um, which focused on web-based resources. I hope that you found this helpful. Um, you can refer back to this video as often as you like, um, but make sure that in order to get credit for doing this um, on the pre-recorded version, that you let your training specialist know the answers to the knowledge checks. Um, do this before September 30th, 2013, so that you can um, get proper credit. Thank you so much, and have a great day.